Hi, so welcome to this week's cook along and once again, thank you for the amazing response. It, again, we sold out really, really quickly. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. So we've got three really nice tasty courses for you tonight. Uh, the starter is here. Um, basically, it's um, some smoked haddock. Um, we've got a nice uh, veloute here that's made from all the trim of the haddock, the bones, the skin, and it's got various spices in it. So it's got a, quite a sort of warmth to it. Uh, we've got some uh, white beans here that have been cooked down with some leeks and a little bit of chive oil. So first of all, we need to cook um, cook our smoked haddock. I'm just going to get a saucepan. So obviously I've just got one portion here. If you've got two um, and they're quite fat, uh, you're going to need to use a bigger pan. Um, they do all vary in size. Obviously the haddock's thick at one part and thin at the other part. So some of you are going to have slightly thicker some of you are going to have thinner and wider. Um, this is um, semi-cooked, so it's been cured and it's been smoked. Smoked fish cooks quicker than normal fish. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this velouté, just pop it in here. And I'm just going to warm it gently. Now, I'm not going to um, get it going really, really vigorously boiling um, because um, it could split. So all I'm going to do is just warm it up a little bit. And just that you'll notice it'll start going a little bit liquid and then we're going to poach the fish in it so this fish is not going to take long to cook um it'll probably take three four minutes probably three minutes actually just poach it in here so get up to a sort of mid temperature just as soon as you start seeing any sort of bubbles or anything and then we'll pop that in there knock it down to a lowish heat Pop the lid on and I'll come back and check it. Now, don't let it catch because um, it is quite thick. So remember, just keep that sort of moderate heat on there. Check it after about three minutes. If you come back to me in three minutes, I'll check it's done. Okay, so it's been cooking for um, about three minutes. We just have a look in the pan. Now you can see around here, it's just starting to kind of separate and thicken a little bit. If I press that, it's just, just, just flaking so I know that that's actually done but the sauce if you can see it has reduced a little bit too much so if you just wait there I'm just going to put a tiny tiny amount of water in there and we'll just pop that in there and we'll just shake it in and that just brings everything back together so the fish is cooked there now so all I'm going to do so I'm just going to pop the lid on, take it off the heat and just leave it to one side and then I'm going to warm these beans up in the microwave, you can do it in the microwave or in a pan, um, just get them well heated through and then we'll plate it up. So warm my beans up, um, all I need to do now, um, obviously I'm just going to use half of this, just drain them off, so just press to the side like that and remove some of the liquid. Pop a little bit in the middle. Now I'm going to pop my fish on top. The little velouté around it. Then we're just going to finish it with a little bit of this uh, chive oil. So there we go. It's smoked haddock with haddock and curried velouté, white beans and leeks. So on to the main course. Uh, one thing I need to mention, well two things I need to mention actually, is the oven's on 200 degrees. First thing you need to do is get your oven on, pop your bread in. Bread wants about 15 minutes um, at 200 degrees, just to crisp up. Um, and Tony says, don't get any of the velouté on anything white because it won't come out, okay? So don't blame me. So on to the main course. We've got a beautiful piece of lamb rump. So lamb rump is a piece from the top of the leg. 
Uh, for me, it's my favourite part of the lamb. It's got um, tenderness to it if it's cooked correctly, um, but it's got really, really nice flavour as well. Um, this, the outer skin's been taken off, just keep this layer of fat. And you can see the fat's um, relatively thin, so we're gonna get that nice and crispy. Um, so we'll start it off in a pan, just get the pan on, get some heat in it. Just pop it in there. Just wash my hands. So into a dry pan, I've just placed it on a medium heat. And what we're looking to do now is just get colour on that fat and just render it down. So after it's been in there a minute or two, no, not a minute or two, about a minute, get a spoon, press it in the middle. Because what you'll find is the edges curl up and um, that bit won't brown. So we need to just keep it, keep the pressure on. You know, don't rush this, don't add the heat too high. Just get a nice bit of colour on it. Get in there like that now. Okay. Right, so once you've got a little bit of colour on there, we pop it in our oven, it's at 200 degrees. It's probably going to take about 12 minutes. Um, I'm going to check it after 10. So if you come back in 10 minutes, and uh, I'll discuss with you exactly to know how it's cooked perfectly. Okay, so it's been in 10 minutes, I'm going to check it. I did flip it over halfway through. Right, if have a look at that, you can see, stick it on that bit there, still really, really springy and soft. You see that? My finger goes right in. Uh, that tells me it's not quite done. And also, if you look there, you can see it's really, really pink. Quite, really soft there. What will happen when it's cooked is it'll bounce back to be a lot firmer. So I'm going to give that about another two to three minutes, then we're going to rest it for five minutes. So back in the oven for another two to three minutes. So, a couple of minutes in there. And you can see now it's nice and firm. So all I'm going to do now is season it all over with salt. Uh, no pepper, I don't use pepper on anything like this, just only needs salt. And then we're going to rest it for five minutes. So just pop it out of the pan, stick it to one side, Give it five minutes to rest. While that's resting, I'm gonna warm up the lentils in the microwave. I'm gonna warm up the jus in the microwave. I'm gonna warm up the puree in the microwave. And for our, this here, which is a brand new ingredient, um, these are basically um, the garlic sprouts. So these are the first sprouts from the garlic, just as the garlic's being grown. And um, just as I thin them out, we get these. So it looks like a spring onion, but it's flavoured like garlic. So while that's resting for five minutes, I'm just going to put this into the oven, just dressed in the kind of the fat from the lamb. Um, I'll just give it a couple of minutes just to warm through. So, meat's been resting. I've heated the garlic sprout up. This is parsnip puree that we've just heated. You'll have to remove the lids from the jus and the puree because they don't take that much heat. And these are some beautiful pui lentils, which are one of my absolute favourite things in the world. So a little tip, just pop your plate in the oven just for a minute or two, just to warm through, to get it nice and warm. I'm just going to check on my lamb. This lamb is uh, perfectly cooked, I'm really, really happy with this. Little tip I'll give you, or restaurant tip. Once you've cut it, take it back off there and just let it sit on there just for a minute or two. It'll just basically absorb any, any liquid that comes out from the meat. So just do that while you're plating everything else. So we got our lentils, beautiful lentils, absolutely love these. Got little bits of truffle trimming in there as well. Thyme. Brunoise of vegetables, all my favourite things. I'm going to pop the lamb on top. And I like to just put a little bit of, um, so we seasoned it with fine salt, but I just like to put a little bit of rock salt or molden salt on top as well, just for texture. So we're just going to get a little bit of this beautiful parsnip puree. 
some of our garlic sh sprouts and then just because we're in Yorkshire it doesn't really need it but a little bit of gravy a little bit of jus on there what a beautiful early sort of spring type dish so the first of spring with the garlic shoots rump of lamb braised puy lentils lamb jus Parsnip puree and garlic shoots, beautiful. So for dessert, we're gonna have what's a lot of people's favorite pudding. I can't take the credit for this, this is Tony's recipe. Um, sticky toffee pudding, beautiful with dates, flavor with cinnamon, ginger, etc. And butterscotch sauce, and then this is my invention. Um, caramel that's flavored with roast banana. We did this for the last cook along and we had so many co good comments about it, so I thought we'd do it again. So it's just dead, dead, dead easy, this basically. Just warm your caramel sauce up until it's nice and hot. Do that first. Just warmed it up. And then we're gonna do this in bursts. So I've just got half the size that you've got. So if you just cut it and then microwave it in bursts, I'm gonna, um, this is probably gonna take about, it doesn't take long, 45 seconds, so I'd say, if you do your, um, yours for about 45 seconds to a minute and then check it, uh, and as soon as it's warm, it's done basically. So I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave to warm up. So I just warmed it up for 30 seconds or so in the microwave. Um, we'll just pop it on here. Beautiful butterscotch sauce over it. Uh, I probably have clotted cream with this as well because I'm extremely greedy, but um, you'll probably get yourself diabetes doing that sort of thing. Or even some pouring cream, or even ice cream. Anything for more calories. There we go. Our sticky toffee pudding with butterscotch sauce and roast banana caramel. Right, well, I really enjoyed that menu and I'm rather stuffed now. <laughs> it was quite a rich one, but I thought really, really delicious. Uh, thanks so much for all your support once again. We are doing another cook along for Mother's Day. You can get in touch and let us know if you want to book on that as well. Please, please do share your meals uh, on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, etc. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. Thanks ever so much and enjoy.